Doppler shift for radar and beyond using an E&M wave representation. We did part one earlier. That was a non-relativistic case. By beyond, we meant relativistic case. So we're going to do part two now. And we're going to bring in a little bit of special relativity. So the original diagram that we had before, we've changed it a little. We still have the radar. It's putting out a, a wavelength at frequency F0. Wavelength lambda zero. And instead of an aircraft, we now have the USS Enterprise from Star Trek. And it's moving at a very high velocity, but we're only considering subwarp speeds where the velocity is not greater than or equal to the speed of light. So we're staying below the speed of light, but we're getting close to it. The Enterprise is NCC 1701, and a friend of mine, Tim McMichael, pointed out that NCC stands for Naval Construction Company, in case you wondered. Now from part one, what we had was that the frequency seen at the target, and the target in this case is the Enterprise, so the frequency seen by the target for frequency F0 from the radar was F target equals F0, 1 minus V over C, but this is the non-relativistic case. So how do we bring in the relativistic case? You know that if we have a clock back here, and we're sitting right alongside that clock, we'll see the clock going tick, tock, tick, tock. But if we look back at it from the Enterprise, to, from the point of view of the Enterprise, the radar is moving away. So it looks like time has slowed down. So we're going to see tick, talk. The time is dilated. It slows down. Tick. And the relationship for this prime indicates moving coordinate system is uh, gamma delta t. I hope I got that right. And uh, gamma is the Lorentz factor. Gamma is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus c squared over 1 minus v squared over c squared. So if you take a look at what gamma looks like, let's say this is the velocity increasing this way. Here's C. Gamma is 1 at uh, small v. So this is gamma. And as we get closer to C, it begins to shoot up. So that's what gamma looks like. So how do we apply this to what the enterprise will see in terms of the relativistic case. So we want to find out what the frequency is at the target for the relativistic case, and all we have to do is multiply by gamma. And if we do that, we're going to get F0, 1 minus V over C over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And we can simplify that and we'll get F0 times in the denominator we can write that as the square root of 1 minus v over c times the square root of 1 plus v over c and upstairs we could write the 1 minus v over c as the square root of 1 minus v over c times the square root of 1 minus v over c. So these cancel out and we wind up with 
F0 times the square root of 1 minus V over C over this square root of 1 minus V over C. We can simplify that a little bit. Multiply by 1 here, C over C. Multiply by 1 here, C over C. And we'll get F0 times the square root of C minus V over the square root of C. I didn't carry the plus sign here correctly. Plus C plus V. All right, these cancel out, and I'm left with a 1 plus V over C, which I should have had over here, and it is correct now. And so we wind up with that. But what we really want to find out is what is received by the radar. The signal goes to the enterprise. This is what the enterprise sees. That's reflected back to the radar. What is the radar going to see? Well, it's going to see the same sort of thing that we did in a non-relativistic case. The relativistic case for the receive will be equal to the frequency at the target for this relativistic case times the square root of C minus V over the square root of C plus V. And now we substitute in what we have for the target. So you can see we're going to get F0, the frequency transmitted by the radar, times C minus V over C plus V. Let's make sure I got all the square roots in the right place. I think I do. Now earlier, in part one, we said that the frequency received was equal to F0 times 1 plus 1 minus 2V over C plus V squared over C squared. That was the non-relativistic case. And that was the more exact case. We did the simple example earlier in which we just had 1 minus 2V over C. And then we corrected that, worked out for another term, and got this. And since V is much smaller than C for aircraft, this is ignored. and so. The Doppler frequency that you would have for a radar looking at an aircraft would be just this part. But we want to take a look at this part now because we did the relativistic case. So what is the relativistic case equal to? So how can we simplify that? So the received in the relativistic case. Well, we can divide this out. So if we come over here now. We're going to divide C minus V by C plus V, and we're going to see what we get. So just working through it, it's 1 times C plus V, C plus V, subtract it, minus 2V, multiply by minus 2V over C, minus 2V, minus 2V squared over C. And you can see the pattern that's developed here, 1 minus 2V over C plus 2V squared over C squared plus 2V cubed over C cubed, so on. So, it, the received frequency in a relativistic case, we'll just write down a few of those terms, is F0 times 1 minus 2V over C plus 2V squared over C squared minus 2V cubed over C cubed plus minus so on, all the way down the line. And you can see that This agrees with this, this agrees with this, and this is almost 
that except for the factor of two. So when we did the non relativistic case more exactly, we got a term that actually shows up when you do the relativistic case. So, I guess what I want to say now is that we can um, just take a brief look at the redshift. In astronomy, in astrophysics, the astronomers like to use z equals to lambda minus lambda zero over lambda zero. That's a definition for this thing called z. Lambda zero is the original wavelength, which would be what we have here. And then lambda is the wavelength that's observed out at the enterprise. This is not a radar case. This is the one path, one way out. And if we would put in what we had used for, th this is what also equal the observed frequency minus the original frequency over the original frequency. So if we do that for this case, we would get F0, 1 minus V over C minus F0 over F0, and we would get the F0s cancel out, 1 minus V minus 1. The, ones, the 1 and the minus 1 cancels out, so we get a minus V over C. For some reason, the astronomers don't carry that minus sign. So for the non-relativistic case, the Z, non-relativistic, the Z is V over C. We'll use this later. For the relativistic case, it's equal to C plus V over C minus V, the square root minus 1. We're not going to use that. I, I do want to say that there are, so, so this is redshift. Most things in the universe are moving away from one another, so you observe a longer wavelength than what was actually admitted, and so it's a redshift. Um, there is also a uh, cosmological redshift. And sometimes this gets confused with Doppler redshift. This is not Doppler redshift, cosmological redshift. And what we have here are, are say, two galaxies. And the spectrum of the one galaxy, galaxy that we're looking at, so we're looking at this guy, let's say, we see a redshift in it. And it's not necessarily because the galaxy is moving away from us. What is actually happening is that the space between the galaxies is expanding. So at some later time, it looks like that galaxy has moved over here. So you can see a redshift from that. And what happens is this wavelength that's emitted by this galaxy, when it goes through the region where space is expanding, it gets stretched. So it comes out as a longer wavelength. And that is the redshift, longer wavelength, redshift. There's also a gravitational redshift. And so if we imagine having a massive body 
and we're emitting a particular wavelength, as we get further and further from that body, the wavelength increases. So it might have been here, here, and it's much longer out here. So that's a gravitational redshift. And in terms of that redshift parameter z, that is equal to one over the square root of one minus two g m over r c squared, where r is this distance out. M is the mass of the object, G is the dra gravitational constant, and C is the speed of light. So I'm just pointing that out. We're, we're not, we're not going to use that. But there are these three red shifts. There's the Doppler shift, which can be red shift or blue shift. There's the cosmological red shift, which is always red shifted. There's the gravitational redshift, which is always redshifted. And so I want to have a little fun with this. I want to have a little fun with that. So if we come over here, we're going to now look at a blue shift case. You're traveling out in space in the Enterprise. You're going at high speed. And there are red lights and green lights out there in outer space, let's say. And you're coming up on a red light. The red light is on. But because of your speed, it looks like it's green. So you fly through. You get arrested. So you see a red light as green. So the judge says to you, how did this happen? You said, well, I was traveling fast, so the red light appeared green. The judge says, well, how fast were you going? So we use this z that we had over there, lambda minus lambda over zero, lambda minus lambda zero of lambda zero. Green light is 550 wavelength. Red light is 650. Not going to worry about the sign. We showed over there z is equal to v over c. We have 100 over 650. We figure out the velocity is roughly c over is c over 6.5, which is approximately 4.7 times 10 to the seventh meters per second. So we convert that to miles per hour, and we get approximately 10 to the eighth miles per hour. So the judge says, "Okay, we're not going to give you a ticket for going through a red light because it looked green to you, but we are going to give you a ticket because you were speeding." 